is a rule for solo traveling artists. It's an unwritten law. It's like the law says that wherever you're going the first time, you will find the strangest person in a radius of about 50 kilometers. He or she will be there already waiting for you to tell you his or her life story. It's like, <laughs> it's like that. I've seen it many times. Um, it's interesting, you know, it can be really enlightening, but also it's a bit tiring if it happens every evening. <laughs> because not all of those stories are really cool or interesting or anything like that but they just lost track of me that's probably because of the pandemic so the weirdos were hit hard by the coronavirus <laughs> sorry for them but it wasn't like that in 2018 in 2018 I was playing a concert in a town called Dijon that's in France. Um, it was a nice evening. Like here, it was like people who were listening and it was lovely people running the place. Everything was just perfect, you know. Um, a nice concert. And after the show, a girl approached me and said like, listen, that was actually quite good, but you played in the wrong place. Yeah, sorry, what does that mean? Yeah, it's the wrong place. Because you're lucky, I know the right place. I said, oh, that's very good. I'm very happy that you know the right place. <laughs> and I got already afraid of, oh man, this is one of those persons again. Anyway, so I asked her, what is the right place then? What do you think? And she's like, yeah, it's hard to describe, but it's like made for you, you know? They build it just for you. They just didn't know <laughs> then. I said, okay, so is that possible to get more specific with that? And she said, like, mm, actually not. You will love it, but you have to see it. I said, so how do we manage? And she said, yeah, we just go there. I don't know. And she said, yes, we go there. Tomorrow. What do you think about tomorrow? And I said, okay, tomorrow is good. <laughs> so we drove there from the center of Dijon to the countryside, which it's like, you know, Burgundy is beautiful. There's a lot of a lot of fields there with a lot of cows. Not much more, but <laughs> then we came to that place and it turned out to be a little train station. You know, one of those little train station they don't use anymore, but somebody bought it. And the new owner was a retired US Navy pilot. Now you might ask, why would a pilot buy a train station? I mean, these are two different things, planes and trains. So, But there was an easy answer to that, because this guy had a strange hobby. He was collecting train wagons. I mean, not tiny ones, real train wagons. <laughs> exactly. Let that sink in. And I was impressed because there was an Orient Express dining car and an Orient Express sleeping coach, like all that kind of thing. It was super beautiful and it was October, sun was shining, all the colored leaves, you know, super peaceful atmosphere. And I said like, wow, that's nice here. Yeah, let's do a concert here. And he said, yeah, yeah, let's do that. That's great. But I have to show you something very special, a special train wagon. And then he showed me an olive green boxcar. You know what a boxcar is? That's like a train wagon for animals, for cows and pigs and all that, horses. And that's a fucking boxcar. That's not beautiful or impressive or anything. He said, it's a rarity, you know, you can't buy them anymore. And I said, come on, that's rubbish. He said, well, this one is brand new from the factory, 1943. You know, nothing fancy added. I said, okay, still, it's a boxcar. It's a special one. 
look at the details. Um, on the left hand side of the door, you know, there's a slight door in the middle. On the left hand side, there was a little square thing, you know, with stenciled on a sign. And there was the number eight, the digit eight, and a little horse. I said, all right, so you can squeeze eight horses in there? And he said, yes, exactly, exactly. I said, and so what? He said, look at the other side of that door. On the right-hand side, there was the same kind of sign, but it was the digit 40, the number 40, and the Star of David. And that was when I decided I'm not going to play a concert in that place. And it scares the shit out of me knowing there's wagons like that waiting to be used for people like you and me, most certainly. This one's called 40 or 8. <laughs> Right. 